All right, uh, joining us on our live line, Judy Rich. Judy is chair of Sun Corridor Inc., president and CEO of TMC Healthcare. And before we talk with Judy about the post COVID economy recovery, known as Sun Corridor's Pivot Playbook, which is being focused on five areas company recruitment, talent and acquisition and retention, workforce development and training, shovel ready, real estate and tourism. Judy, how are you today? I'm well, Bill. How are you? Doing real well. Thank you for asking. Before we talk about the Pivot Playbook, give us an update on uh, your situation uh, with COVID over at TMC. We are um, back in it again. As you know, we have seen pretty significant uh, changes in the last several weeks with many, many people coming to the hospital again who are COVID positive. Um, I think the the interesting facts are that 99% of the people who are in the hospital are not vaccinated. Uh, we have uh, several in the intensive care unit, and we have uh, many patients who are not uh, sick enough to be in the ICU but must be in the hospital for support to get through uh, their illness. We have seen uh, certainly a different demographic this time. We're not seeing very many people who are over the age of uh, 55, but we are seeing uh, people who are much younger, including um, a fair number of children who are coming to the emergency department, some of them needing some brief support in the hospital. Most of them are able to go home. Uh, They're not severely ill like we've seen with the adults. What about the COVID uh, booster shot that was announced today? Uh, looks like maybe mid-September uh, for folks that uh, have had both of the shots. Uh, will TMC be a player in that, Judy Rich? Well, actually, uh, Bill, we just had a conversation about that yesterday because we believe that our responsibility is to step up um, if needed. The good news is that there are so many places to get the vaccination now, that the need for us to do that on our campus as we did before is much less. So we have an understanding with the Pima County Health Department that they will help define what their needs are after they've been able to look out for a lot of the mobile um, vans that are doing vaccinations and a lot of the, the local pharmacies and doctor's offices. So we will be here as needed Let me quickly ask you before uh, we get into the pivot playbook, uh, one more COVID question about about vaccinations. I know that uh, TMC has decided that all employees will have to be uh, vaccinated. What's your take on why we've had such vaccine hesitancy, Judy Rich? Clearly, it is not a lack of information. Uh, We spent many, many uh, weeks earlier this year focusing on getting information to our staff, making sure that they understood the research, um, the the creation of an mRNA vaccine, how it does not affect our DNA. A lot of education, a lot of physicians here were involved in that education. Uh, Weekly town halls with lots and lots of communication uh, through the internet and So it's not a lack of education. At this point, it's truly a decision that people have made to not get vaccinated. And the decisions are, in a very small part, uh, some religious organizations. But that's a very um, insignificant uh, number when you compare it to the total number of our staff here. And we do still have some people who believe that until the vaccine is off of emergency use authorization, that they are um, unwilling to to get the vaccine. So the decision we made here last week was that our September 1st deadline will only be affected by the date that the EUA is removed. And so we expect that by Labor Day, from all the sources we have, it will be approved by the FDA. And at that point, our staff will have seven days to get their uh, COVID vaccine after it is approved. So by the middle of September, we think that we're going to have a fully vaccinated uh, staff. 
What a year you've had, Judy Rich. Uh, not only uh, leading uh, one of the region's largest hospitals, but also uh, coinciding with chair of Sun Corridor, Inc., and the rollout of the Pivot Playbook. Do you like the whole Pivot Playbook idea? Um, I love it. I think that the fact that we brought together five focused areas put people in charge of each of those five areas and then let them pull their uh, teams together has resulted in a very actionable plan. Talk a little bit about the past year and uh, what has been going on with your priorities uh, at Sun Corridor. Well, clearly we are in the same position that every business is in, which is uh, it feels very difficult to communicate. We can't get on a plane and talk to people about how great it is to bring their business to Tucson. So we have had to change the way that we um, talk about the opportunities here in our region. So the way we've done that is we've really um, used the Internet, a lot of Zoom, uh, spoken to the um, the people that do this work, the site selectors, and really um, bragged about the high-paying targeted industries that we have here, aerospace and defense, logistics, bioscience, mining and solar technologies. And those strengths are real assets that are not difficult to sell, even if you can't get on a plane and sell them in person. So we have um, really focused on those areas, and I think we've been pretty nimble. The staff has been able to adapt since the normal sales channels didn't exist and have done a lot through other means. Quality health care, Judy Rich, how important is it for uh, the site selectors? We've been talking about uh, this group of people uh, in our four previous sessions uh, talking about the Pivot Playbook, about these these site selectors. These are people that really decide, in many cases, if a company is going to relocate to another location. Where does quality health care fit in? It's in the top five things that they're looking for. Uh, education is always there. Uh, talent is always there. Um, business uh, re- readiness is there, but certainly quality health care is fundamental, as fundamental as uh, buying a house and putting your child in a good school. Judy, we're going to pause right here. I want to talk to you some more about uh, about the economy through primary job development as we continue with our Sun Corridor, Inc. interview series. We've done five of these interviews looking at this pivot playbook and how it's going to be so important moving forward in the post-pandemic era. It's the Buckmaster Show. We'll be right back after this. Tucson's original gastropub, Noble Hops in Oro Valley, proudly announces a second Tucson area location where you'll enjoy locally brewed craft beer and gastropub fine fare. Order in or take out at Noble Hops, a pub for foodies, on West Lambert Lane at North La Cañada Drive in Oro Valley, and now at the Doubletree Hotel on Alvernon across from Tucson's Reed Park. More on the web at noblehops.com. When the public weighed in on the first draft of the Regional Transportation Authority Plan, the RTA responded by revising the final plan before voter approval in 2006. The RTA is preparing for a new plan for voter consideration by June 2026 and invites your input on regional transportation priorities. A draft plan will be presented for further public review. Submit your input or learn more at rtanext.com. Hello, I'm Jeanette Buley, President and CEO of the Tucson Airport Authority with news of our new effort to ensure air traveler safety and security going through our terminal. It's called TUS Cares, and you can read more about it on our website, flytucson.com. As you carefully weigh your decision to fly, I want you to know whether it's next week, next month, or next year, we are here for you at Tucson International Airport. Thank you. Hi, this is Pam Krim, CEO of the Better Business Bureau of Southern Arizona, where we set the standards for marketplace trust. 
by engaging with and educating consumers and businesses. The BBB is the place to turn for objective and unbiased information on businesses. Learn more about the many services offered by the Better Business Bureau of Southern Arizona at bbb.org forward slash Tucson. This is Bill Buckmaster urging my listeners to join me in becoming a member of the Reed Park Zoo, one of America's top zoos and home to more than 300 animals from all over the world. When you become a zoo member, you receive free daytime admission, discounts on special events and education programs, and so much more. Find out more about zoo membership and everything you need to know about your zoo visit. ReedParkZoo.org. Are you happy with the news you get? While not all news is good news, you know good reporting when you see it. Check TucsonSentinel.com every day for breaking news and investigative reports. And your say in the comments. It's all in TucsonSentinel.com, your local, independent, nonprofit news. You can rely on TucsonSentinel.com for solid reporting about immigration, Tucson and penal politics, everything from the border to baseball. It's independent news without the spin. TucsonSentinel.com. We are watching Tucson. As a small business owner, I appreciate the services of a top-notch certified public accountant. That's why Michael C. Flowers of Flowers, Rieger & Associates is the CPA firm of the Buckmaster Show. Michael's a former small business leader of the year in Tucson. He'll professionally handle all of your accounting needs and tax preparation services. Flowers, Rieger & Associates, 6125 East Grant Road and on the web, flowersrieger.com. Welcome back. It is the Buckmaster Show. This afternoon we are concluding our five-part series on Sun Corridor, Inc.'s post-COVID recovery plan. The economic recovery plan is known as the Pivot Playbook, which focuses on five areas, company recruitment, talent acquisition and retention, workforce development and training, shovel-ready, and real estate and tourism. With us on the live line is Judy Rich. Judy is chair of the Sun Corridor, Inc. board, and she's president and CEO of TMC Healthcare. Uh, When it comes to a recruitment uh, Judy Rich, in your area of health care, since COVID uh, be- became a reality, health care workers have become so important, uh, not that they weren't before, but there was new emphasis on, I think, people realizing how important they are. Are you having difficulty recruiting enough health care workers in our community? Uh, Bill, it's my number one concern right now. I have never in my entire career had the kind of challenges recruiting clinical staff to the hospital business that we are having now. As a matter of fact, just this morning I was over at our HR department meeting with our recruiters listening to the fact that they're getting into the hospital at 5 a.m. and they're leaving when it's dark because they're calling all over the country for leads for people who are interested in relocating. And it's mostly the nurses, the patient care techs, and the clinical staff that have left the business. They have left our profession throughout this last couple of years, and they are not coming back in large numbers. So we have great deficits to fill. They are leaving because of the stress of the COVID? Absolutely. Absolutely. They are burned out. And that's a word that we've used for many, many years, but I've never seen it the way I see it today. They are somewhat angry. And it's become more difficult now to know that we don't have to be where we are, that with a vaccine, we don't need to go through another surge. But yet, here we are. Do you have help for the people who feel they're burned out and they still want to stay in the career? Uh, This is a difficult time for them. Is there some help for these people? We sure do. We have contracted with outside mental health counselors. We have done all of the kinds of programs inside the building that we can think of. We feed our staff. We make rounds to encourage them. We've had things like puzzle nights and uh, rock climbing and anything that we believe might get them out of the pain and the Um, burnout that they're feeling here at the hospital and we are trying to support them 
in any way possible, but mostly it's counseling, it's talking. And yet, Bill, what's difficult is when their shift is done, they just want to go home. Mm. Boy, our heart goes out to all of them, all of those frontline uh, health care workers. What a very difficult time. And, you know, it's been a very difficult time to, to, for economic development, as you well know, Judy. And I think Tucson has done pretty darn well when you look at the national media coverage. Uh, uh, a lot of major news stories have been appearing about uh, Tucson. That's helped, hasn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, we were thrilled with the media coverage that we have um, had uh, mostly last year, but some this year as well, including the New York Times and Fast Company. We've had 15 major news stories about Tucson as a wonderful place to move, a wonderful place to live, wide open spaces, and lots of opportunities here. So we've had to develop some very creative approaches to selling our area, haven't we? <laughs> That's for sure. Um, as I said before, virtual. Uh, so our business development team really had to generate projects in the midst of the pandemic in a different way. A lot of um, interesting information that they needed to share in a new way and really sell the benefits of this beautiful place that we live without having the opportunity to invite people to come here. Uh, we've had a couple of very significant new businesses who've made decisions to move their entire company here, never having stepped foot um, off the plane to our um, beautiful wow. Tucson Sonoran Desert. And that is the, the work of, of the people at Sun Quarter who have been able to use the skills that they have and really make the case for why economically this is where you want your business to be. I heard that these 15 companies are devel uh, have a, like an economic impact of one and a half billion billion with a B over the next five years. Wh why are they coming kind of sight on scene? Is it because uh, not only uh, it's a beautiful area, but uh, folks can can work now in different places. They don't necessarily have to be in New York, San Francisco, or L.A. That's right. Um, and, you know, our cost of living here, even though those of us who've been here a while can see the housing prices go up, relatively speaking, is still a not expensive place to live. So you can leave those higher priced markets that you mentioned. You can work out of your home here and you can have um, the, the beautiful surroundings that really give somebody who wants to move here a lot of opportunities. We have a lot of diversity we have great talent coming out of our um, community college and out of the University of Arizona. We have um, a lot of tech and a lot of science here. And, and we also have real estate. We need more. We need more shovel-ready. That's one of our um, key focus areas. But we do have land, and it does not feel like New York or L.A., let me ask you about uh, the Pivot Playbook and, and people uh, that have been involved with that, uh, decision makers in our community coming together. You've been in town uh, a long time, and so have I. Have you ever seen anything like uh, people pulling together like they did during this COVID period? I have not, and I think that the fact that uh, Joe Snell put us together early on the Zoom, of course, and said, uh, we have a job to do, let's figure out how to get it done, really was an example of people who deeply are invested in this community coming together and saying, how can I help? What is it that I can do? And they showed up, and they, uh, they came through for us. They, they did the work. They got their information from their teams in on time. And then, of course, our team at Sun Quarter was able to collate all of that information, put it together, and we are continuing to see uh, increased momentum and, and increased um, uh, outcomes as a result of this very detailed plan that we've put together in the Pivot Playbook. Before we let you go, Judy, as I said, you've been in town a long time. What do you think this, what's the strongest selling point for our area? Well, 
I think I think it's our people. I have always believed that the people who who live in this region are special. We have diversity, we have talent, we have education, and you see all of those resources in our people. We are welcoming and friendly. We are smart. We are um, very reasonable people politically. I think we have both both views are represented in our region. And so you put that all together, and we have incredible people that make incredible things happen. Judy Rich, uh, before we let you go, I want to bring it back to health care. And uh, I know many people uh, worry if they have an emergency, if they have a heart issue, if they have something that really they need to be seen by a physician. Uh, I think sometimes they may be worried about the COVID, but what is your advice to these people that need to come in? Well, it's very different than it was in March of 2020, Bill. That was the scary time because we didn't know what we didn't know. What we know now is we know how to pull people into the emergency department, into the hospital. We know how to keep them safe. We have learned how to use our personal protective equipment, how to manage the airflow in the hospital, within the rooms and in the ED. And it's a very different environment than it was before. So it's safe. It can be busy, but it's safe. And anyone with those kinds of things that you mentioned should certainly never hesitate to seek care at the hospital. All right, Judy Rich, uh, I don't envy you because you've got a very big job uh, ahead of you uh, as we plow through this this recent surge with COVID-19. Are, are there any bright spots? Uh, are the cases seem to be leveling off or are we kind of in the middle of it? It's still too soon to say it's getting better, uh, Bill, but the best thing that I can say is what I said sooner, which is people are not as sick, and um, we are not seeing the kind of death that we saw before. So even though it's tough to be here, it's tough to be in the hospital getting care, our, our outcomes are better, and we're thankful for that. Judy Rich, always a pleasure. Good uh, catching up with you. Judy Rich from TMC and the chair of Sun Corridor, Inc. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Judy Rich uh, with us, and people can find out more about Sun Corridor by going to their website, suncorridorinc.com. That's going to do it for the Buckmaster Show Midweek Edition. On behalf of Tom Fairbanks Engineering and producing the show, I'm Bill Buckmaster. Have a great afternoon, everybody.